Okay, so in this second part of the course 6A on uh, Networks Evolution Models, uh, we will see how a branch of uh, the statistics on stochastic process called the Markovian theory with Markov chains and Markov process can be uh, useful for describing the way networks uh, evolve. So, uh, this is the central idea that we will uh, precise and develop. So, uh, statisticians uh, that, mm, that knew uh, Markov processes uh, discovered that network evolution can be seen as a Markov process. A Markov process, normally you have already uh, uh, heard about the Markov process in your statistical course with François Bavot, but uh, this is a stochastic process. So this is used to describe the way a system uh, evolves from a state to another. And uh, you describe this evolution by uh, calculating the probability uh, for your system to go from the state, uh, let's say, S to another state, T. So this is a stochastic process. Markov process or specific kinds of uh, stochastic pro process. It's, it has the Markov property. And the Markov property is that there is uh, no memory in the Markov process. So you can predict the future of your system, so the future state of your system, using only the current state of your system, using only the present. The past of the system, the sequence of past states uh, occupied by your system, is not relevant to uh, predict the possible states in which your system will be. And from a, from, from a more mathematical point of view, a Markov process is a sequence of random variables defining states, and the, the set of all states is called the outcome space, and these states, these states are linked by uh, transition probability. So, network evolution can be seen as Markov process. If you say that in a more scientific way, you say that network evolution model is assumed to be a Markov process. It's not. Uh, it's a specific kind of Markov process. It's a continuous time Markov process. So network evolution model is assumed to be a continuous time Markov process. We add another level of precision. So to be very precise, as the probability distribution of a model of network evolution is assumed to be a continuous time Markov process with finite outcome space. So this is the, uh, the, the highest level of detail, statistically, uh, statistically speaking. So the final central idea with this Markov process that represents the network, the probability distribution of the evolution of the model of the network. So uh, there are several properties. The first is that time is considered continuous, so uh, this um, relies to continuous time Markov process with uh, rates of change in a matrix called transition rate matrix. You consider that links may change over time, but the node set has to be fixed, so you don't consider that you can remove or add some nodes during time. The outcome of the Markov process, so the output space, what the Markov process produces, is the set of links. So, given a fixed set of nodes, the possible outcomes of the Markov process are the set of links between these nodes. Uh, then, in the Markov process, you consider some transition mechanism. And this mechanism says that at random times, according to the rates of change, a link between two nodes can appear or disappear. Uh, sometimes, in what we call actor-oriented models, you can see that as an actor randomly chosen, so an, a random node, a random actor, may decide to change one of its outgoing links, saying that uh, he, he may create or remove uh, one of its links towards uh, one of, it, of its neighbors. 
and this transition mechanism uh, that will uh, di direct uh, govern the apparition or uh, removal of links can be used to represent some global processes like for example densification let's say that uh, the probability of a link to be added uh, is positive dyadic process like uh, homophily or transitivity and for actor oriented models preferences of the actor in tie formation so we do that with Markov process uh, Markov process relies on Markov chains so I have to introduce uh, some properties and some notation to let to describe how the Markov chain is used to uh, model the process of network evolution. So we start by some observation at, di at different times in, uh, in the set tau of times, uh, ranging from T1 to Tm, the last observation. The Markov process we have is Xt, with the outcome space chi. Chi is the set of uh, let's say, every possible network configuration. It's a Markov process, so it, uh, it has a Markov property that uh, xt, so the state of the network at time t, for t greater than a day ta, is only a function of the state xt at the time t of the network at the time ta. So this is a mathematic equivalent of you only have to know the current state to, to know the, fu the future state of your uh, system. Since it's a, it's a continuous time Markov process, you have a transition rate matrix that gives for two, uh, for two configuration of networks, X and X prime, the rate at which the process will change the network from the state X to the state X prime. So, it just means that uh, this value, q, uh, q of x and x prime, will reflect the intensity of change. Sometimes the transition rate is also called the intensity matrix. So it will reflect the intensity of change that occurs to transform the network in a state x, so in a configuration in a shape x, to another configuration x prime. And finally, the transition matrix gives us, so pay attention, this is not the transition rate matrix, this is a transition matrix. This matrix gives us the probability, uh, starting from a time ta, to be in a configuration x prime uh, after a time tb minus ta. So you take two dates. Ta, you observe the configuration of your network, this is x, so x in Ta is little x, the configuration observed at that Ta, and this probability gives you the probability to be after, ti after time Tb mi T B minus Ta to be in the different configuration x prime at the time Tb. And knowing that for every possible couple of configuration of your outcome space gives you the, prob the transition probability matrix and this is what we want for our model because if we know for each time for every possible configuration the time after which we will be in this configuration we have a way to predict the evolution of our networks we have a way to describe the way the network will evolve, will be transformed. We have a model of the network evolution. So this is what we want. In fact, what we really want is the capital Q matrix. Uh, mathematical reasons make that a probability transition matrix, so P, the matrix of uh, probability transition, this equation, have to satisfy this differential equation. The solution to this kind of differential equation when you have, let's say, x, so when you have t over dt of x equal uh, qx, 
the solution is exponential exponential qx. But here we not we do not have simple variables like x, y, and z. We have matrices. So the solution is still p of t, which is the probability distribution matrix, is equal to the exponential of t q as for regular variables. But here the exponential of a va of a matrix is a little bit more complicated than the exponential the exponential so exponential of a number and it is given by this formula so to compute the exponential of a matrix you have to make this infinite uh, sum so what really describes the evolution of our networks is the probability distribution p of t but we can solve this equation with the capital Q matrix, which is the transition rate matrix. If we know capital Q, we know P of T, and P of T describes the evolution. So in fact, what we want is to find Q. We want to find the values of Q. A final uh, property is that if every uh, configuration is accessible, so if there is no forbidden uh, configuration, there is a unique stationary distribution for your Markov chain. It's just the state in which will be your network after an infinite uh, amount of time. So you can say that you can see this, uh, this state at the ultimate state of your network evolution process. So, a little summary for Markov chain in case of where you we use it for uh, network evolution. Markov process is useful for network evolution description. If we have the probability transition matrix, we can describe every possible evolution of the network with its probability. So we will say, for example, that the most probable configuration to be, uh, to be uh, reached by the network will be the one with the highest probability. So what we really want is probability transition. But in fact, the transition rate matrix, the capital Q matrix, help us to find it. But we don't know what are the terms of, of the transition rate matrix. We don't know what are the values of Q. And in the next part of the course, we will see uh, some simple example of uh, Markov chain models uh, where we can sometimes calculate uh, or simulate the values of Q. That's it for this part. Thank you.